welcome back. Uh, this is the B&O uh, railroad car 3316, the observation car. And we're here to document the disassembly of the window assembly. Um, overview of the why we're going through this process is the car is going to get, is in the process of total restoration, exterior and interior. Uh, in order to do the exterior work, we need to do some work on the exterior skin. But we're, by doing that, we're going to be grinding and cutting. Uh, we don't want to introduce um, sparks and as little as amount of water as possible into the interior. So what we're doing is taking the window systems out, apart and out. First of all, so the blinds can get rehabbed. And then the window units can get replaced as in new glass. Um, and in that process then, um, so then when everything is done, then the windows can go back in and everything will be great. Also, and a lot of these um, window sills themselves are going to be, have to be need to be replaced. Part of the process is for the protection. We're cutting old plexiglass that we have in stock to fit. Um, and then um, we're doing a flame fire blocking foam just to seal the edges. Uh, and again, we're just trying to start stop the wear and um, st stopping the by chance of any sparks or anything being able to come in and burn um, inside. So, process is um, we got the existing blind. Well, first of all, we got a handrail on this particular one, so we'll take disassemble that one. Not too big of a process. One other thing we do. Um, for all our projects is label and label and label. So everything will be coming off window specific. And at the beginning of the job we went and identified a number si numbering system within the, the unit. This particular unit is, or window is 6N. So every screw, every bolt, everything that comes out we'll put into a bag labeled specifically. We will either reuse the nuts and bolts that we find and or know what to replace them with. years these units have been put together and taken out many times so there is no real standardization of what screw and what what size and or shape when we go to reassemble. So the next piece we'll be taking out is the shade. Um, in our process we've come to find out it's a three-part piece. You've got two supports right and left and then you have um, the shade itself, which is on a car two carriers. So you got the bottom and top. There's a spring release on both sides that allows the unit to drop out. And again, the railroad built things correctly. Uh, the next. Yeah, so then now what we're going to do is start tackling the exterior tracks. And then get the ones on the right. track itself with a nice spring on the top. It's got a hard rubber liner on the inside that the line ran up and down. Again, I will mark this. This is on the back so it won't hurt anything. And there's various other marks from people who've done the same thing over the period of years. 
um, different numbering systems. In theory, these look like they're pretty much the same as every other one, so they probably could be switched out. But we have learned a long time ago that to try to keep everything in its respective hole. Again, this is the left side. Now we got a top and bottom trim piece. Uh, so again, it looks like it's Phillips. And these trim pieces are covering this mounting plate. Interesting enough, all of these windows come out to the inside of the car, um, opposed to some of the other engines and rear cars that we've worked on that the windows went to the outside. This may or may not have helped with the the problem with the water getting into the car because of there was no real other place for the water to go. So again we'll label this. Is the bottom. I'm going to do a simple right or L for the right and left. And again, it may ultimately not matter, but we do go ahead and do that so that. And you notice that we have all these holes that, but over the years, the railroad or the people that worked on this only put in a couple of the. only a couple of the screws which ultimately would have been a problem too. Not so much for the trim, but ultimately for the frame. As mentioned before, it's we, doing our job, we try to identify why things fell apart over the period of life. Um, just as much as for interest as of, and when we rebuild this, we try to maybe solve some of those problems. Again, this is identified as the top. And again, I just do a simple right now. We'll nest these together and then tape them up and identify them. Part of the process of redoing it, we will be cleaning all these units, so ultimately these will be taken apart and put back together many times, as in bundles. So the way this design is, that we're now looking at the window frame, and we have a steel plate that is the profile of the window. But then you have these larger quarter, looks like quarter 20 screws that were meant to actually sandwich that window frame against the frame of the rail car. And here you can see all the bolt holes. So in its history, we have close to 40 holes here. But now, when we open this up, we find that there's only one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of the 40 machine screws. And so that could have also been the problem as with the sandwiching of this against the frame. If you don't have an even pressure against that, that could also perhaps allow moisture to get in between the gasket and, and the body frame and thus allowing water into the unit. Um, we don't know that, but it's just a, a sneaking suspicion. So the wood sill comes out. 
This one's actually in fairly good condition. It's just a, looks like it's a half inch or maybe five eighths plywood with some sheet good for mica that was pressed onto it. So again, this will be labeled. And the sill will also be labeled just for the giggles. Again, this, if it can be cleaned and reused, we will reuse them. stuck together now with the other one. Okay, so now we're looking at the window frame assembly itself. Uh, so what again is a two pieces of aluminum frame that have yet another probably 50 screws, darn close to it, 40-50, um, that sandwich the two panes of glass and in a rubber gasket. So we're going to this unit, this glass is, this frame is just pushed or sandwiched up against the exterior gasket, which is dried and falling apart. So this unit will come down, and again our glass supplier will then now take these frames, well it's still to be determined whether we're going to be taking the frames apart or he is. Clean them, replace the glass, and then deliver them back for reinstallation. So get this this window well there. So you got the existing gasket that just sat on this exterior little eighth inch or less. That's not even even um, it's 14 gauge, I think it is um, steel edging. All the gaskets as in they're all dry rotted and whatever but the profile was a simple um, little edge that's set out on the metal and then the inside just is a fluted face that goes, goes up against the aluminum frame. Pretty simple detail now that we have figured out. So what I will be doing now is then vacuuming, cleaning out the sill of all the old rust and sand and whatever else that's in here. And then I'll be or putting a pre-cut piece of um, plexiglass into the space. thing with the foam is that it'll be easily broken out of there when we need it. It'll be gone. Nothing permanent. And the foam itself is a very cheap for as many years as I get out of a can option. It's flame resistant. Spark resistant. It also conforms to odd places that very easily and very quickly so that we can just sit there and throw this real quick. In a couple hours it'll, it'll be up to strength. We will also be sanding and painting the exterior. Just use shims to hold it out for the time being. Hold it in place actually until the sun sets up.
nice thing about these cans is they made it into a reusable applicator so that in can so that when that dries I can come back in the next couple days and reuse it. So one can is able to be through about six different windows, which is kind of nice. So but that's kind of the process. Um,